Uh, I'm Adam Cooper. I work for Tribal as a data science analyst. So I think one of the big achievements in learning analytics has been to uh, to get a, a group of people together, uh, having a, a deep conversation about this. I think there have been a number of, um, of good events, both bringing together research community and the non-research community. Uh, many voices there. Uh, that's really helped to make learning analytics to be a concept that people are thinking about now in a way that's more rich than simply um, business analytics on, on data that universities or schools might have. So I think one of the, the key achievements really is, is a sense of what learning analytics is that's distinct from educational research, that's distinct from business intelligence, that's distinct from educational data mining. We have now this rich uh, synthesis of ideas. Not necessarily everybody uh, who has a necessary point of view engage in the conversation, but uh, we've, we've got an idea that we can move forward with. Uh, I think one of the challenges that we face going forward is uh, is making the path from where we are to where we want to be, and that one of the issues here is that learning analytics uh, is potentially a very powerful tool that can really change the way teaching and learning happens, it can change the decision making, it can change the power structure in universities and schools. Uh, and therefore probably needs to be done in a way which accommodates the complexity of those organisations. And simply having a plan for how we, how we might do learning, unless people might say, well, we're going to implement learning analytics, uh, is, a, is a dangerous prospect because the situation is very complex, it's a very powerful tool. So one of the issues I think is, is, is how can we move forward in a way which can take advantage of what we know but also not assume things that we don't yet know. And I think one of the roles for policy here is to, is to try to, to uh, stimulate a, a very reflective approach to implementing, but also to help people be incremental, that they can get started with a fairly small part, can learn from that in context, um, uh, and have an opportunity to share the learning with other people that are also experimenting so that yeah, they can develop a, a locally contextualised understanding, but one which is based upon sharing other people's initial experimentation and moving forward. Uh, and that uh, it can be a journey where learning is part of, of implementing learning analytics. So one other thing I think is, is to, um, to move from where we are now, where data is uh, seen as being uh, largely an administrative feature or something that's incidentally captured by software. So I think we'll see over the next five years, people will start to be thinking about data as being more of an asset. Um, they'll be doing things that are designed to create um, valid and usable data um, by what they're doing rather than just trying to exploit what data we have. But the key issue here, I think, is, is trying to see data as an asset. Uh, we're starting to see, uh, particularly universities now, thinking more about their data architecture and managing data more as an asset beyond that pure administrative aspect. And I think that will be uh, an important change that we'll start to see in the next five years, but it will take much longer to really implement. <laughs>